unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. You know, the spirit was telling me, if we teach people the right way to pray, they'll get the results they want. And if they can get the results they want, then we have ministry. The church will grow. You understand where I'm coming from? Many people don't know how to pray. For example, tonight when I share the prayer code one, many of you are going to realize, oh, oh, I didn't pray this way. You see, I was sharing with somebody the other day, and I told him, you are a total sum of the people you hang out with. You understand? You are a total sum of the people you what? You hang out with. If you want to grow in God, hang out with someone who is mature in God. Or who? shows results. Don't hang out with someone who will not grow you. They will always derail you. You start in one prayer meeting and then two and then the third one will be a movie and the fourth one will be a chicken and you lose it. Are you hearing me? When you realize that somebody has an answer in particular issue, understand how he does it because these are answers. This is your life. You're hearing me. This is your life. It's not anybody's life. It's your life. It's your responsibility. Not anybody else, but yourself. Are you hearing me? Okay, how can a Christian know that this is working for this person and they don't want to know how it's working? But they want it to work in their lives. And they want it to work in their lives on their own terms. If it doesn't work on their own terms, it's wrong. It doesn't work. Are you hearing me? You see, let me tell you something. Sometimes we stress submission for a particular reason. For those that I'm truly and entirely responsible for, there are certain things I expect them to. Now when Paul tells Timothy, considering whom you have learned from, okay, he's saying, observe a man's end of conversation. It means that there are certain things that we will tell you over time. You do not need to go through everything for you to prove it is true. But if you trust that the God who called us is the same God you serve, and the Lord told you, submit to that man. Trust me, submit to him. You will grow. Are you hearing me? Listen to these things. You know, some people are the way they are because they're ignorant. And they're ignorant because, not because they were not taught these things, but they're unteachable. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Not because they did not learn these things, but they are unteachable. Unteachable means they listen to these things and they flash them out tomorrow. They listen to these things and they flash them out tomorrow. And then consequently you start to repeat things over and over. And then after that a Christian comes with a silly question and asks you, Apostle, how be it that I have been in this thing for so long but I don't see results in my life? Question your submission. Question your submission. Because the first question I ask you is, why is it that some people in church are seeing results? Don't you eat the same food? Don't you go to the same class? Don't you study the same God? Don't you pray? Don't you worship at the same time? How be it that they get results and you don't get results? You are the problem. Are you hearing me? Now you can bite your tongue and scream and cry and do all these things. But at the end of the day, the problem is you. You see, when the Bible says you entered where in other men labored, okay? It means that there are certain things that are your portion simply because you submitted to a man who was a portion of those things. You get what I'm trying to tell you. If I did not struggle to open a door X, you will not struggle to open a door X. Put it in your head. Okay? If you refuse that kind of life, take a longer route and learn how to open it. But that longer route you're taking to open that door is just going to waste your time because I can show you a quicker way too. Why don't you listen to that and grow? Are you hearing me? Look at people who are consistent in the gospel and look at their lives and see whether they are not really submitted. It's like attending service. For example, how do you expect to attend when you want, when you can, and you expect the exact results you want? How? You get around to tell you? 
Jesus. There was a time he preached to all. But there was a time where Jesus makes a decision and says, let me get 12 guys. That time comes in life. And I feel right now this ministry has come to that level. You understand? Not in a bad sense, but I've realized that even though 5,000 are working with you, not all of them will be directly getting it like you want them to. Okay? So the multitudes will come and will have 10,000, 5,000, that matter, it's okay. But there is a people who have to be in the inner circle. You see, look at the Bible. When Judas Iscariot commits suicide, the Bible says, let us select of the men who moved with Christ. They could not just get a certain funny look warm Peter because for him he overprays. Therefore, he's mandated. No. The Matthias who gets the place of Judas was a man who walked along with them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer to you as a spiritual father, I don't want many of you to repeat mistakes we had to repeat to learn. Because you're only going to be slower. Some of us did not know what you know at your age. Even though we're not very old, okay? We wished we knew these things. And a time will come when we're not as available as we are now. Are you hearing me? But you know, some of you, it will cost you when you're older. Some of you, it will cost you when you're older. Because you see, age is not years. Okay? Age is different. Many people are old by age, but they are young in their spirit. You see how they respond to life. Hallelujah. Now, if something works, it works. If something works, it work. Okay? If I tell you this works, it does. Why? Because it has worked in my life. is over Ghana. If you don't trust it, go and submit to one who it works for elsewhere. I won't hang you. I will understand that for me you didn't find it in me. But at least heed when you say you submit to the ministry. Listen to these things. You will see that your life will become what? Easier. You don't need to struggle. Some of you, you must understand this. You don't need to struggle with certain things. They are simpler. Prayer code 1, James chapter 4, verse 3. Common scripture. The Bible says, You ask and receive not because you ask and miss that you may consume it upon your lust. Lust is desires. You can lust over a phone. You can lust over a DVD player. You can lust over a BMW, etc. Okay? But the Bible says that you ask and receive not because you ask a miss. So, why don't people get results? Is it because what they ask for is so big for them? Why don't they get results? They ask for this. Think about it. So, even when you prayed and you felt in Xavier, and then after praying you realized you did not get the results you wanted, what was wrong? You asked a miss. It is. Don't ever complicate things, okay? You ask a miss. You see, religion has taught men the wrong way. And that's the problem with people who prolong their bondage in the places of ignorance, okay? So I'll give you an example. The Bible says, do not be like them who repeat prayers over and over, <laughs> like the Lord has not had them, okay? But there are people who are teaching right now in this generation, and they are saying that if you want answered prayer, sustain, insist, fight for it until it what? It happens. They made a compact with scholarship. Do you know there are some people who have prayed for marriage until they got tired of praying for marriage? Now anything, God, just bring anything. Bring it, God. Okay? But there was a time they were persistent in what? In the prayers. Let me tell you something. Grace will be the rule of the thumb. If I pray a certain prayer and it doesn't work, I never repeat it. If I go to God and plead, oh, help me, and it doesn't, I don't pray that way anymore. Because I know the rule of the thumb is do not repeat over and over. I hear me. I must ask myself, why hasn't it worked? Or why haven't I seen what I'm supposed to see? Because that's the point of prayer. Everybody who goes in prayer, they must come back with a certain kind of result. You just can't go to prayer. Then you come back. By bed. And you see, those are the men who have made us hate prayer. Pastor Zach, there were guys, I used to ask myself, but God, this guy prays more than I do. Have you noticed those kinds of people? You see, a certain man tells you he's sustained by prayer. You go to a certain man's life who even prays more than the one who is sustained by prayer. And you look at their life's person and you realize that eh, they are actually not moving. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? 
sha sha and they even change work shetelele 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 shaka 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 people pray but you don't look your prayer life you don't come out and we see the anointing we just see a dead voice i was praying the whole night i praise the lord <laughs> so i used to watch people who pray it's true but they don't look the prayer they don't look the glory of prayer they don't look the glory of answered prayer they have a certain form of understanding how prayer ought to be but they don't have the results of prayer and then a guy comes from somewhere and makes a simple prayer for 3 seconds and the whole house is on fire And you ask yourself, how be it so that this man can pray in three seconds and get results, and this guy is praying for forty days to get something? Oh, do you know how many men have fasted for what you see in your life, and they've not even gotten a quarter of what it is in your life, but they are fasting for it? Some of you take for granted the things you have, or you've been so used to them that you think that they are not things anymore. But there are people who can fast for days for what is upon your life. They would give it all to get what's upon your life. There are people who have been out of their houses for five days, six days, twenty days. They're on prayer mountain. They're screaming out their lungs, but they're going to go back home with painful throats, tonsillitis, and anything. And they're going to swallow medicine, and they're going to go back home. And they're not going to find food at home. They're not going to find anything at home, and they're going to go back to that mountain again. And they're going to pray and pray and pray and get old, and then die. No more people praying with no results in their lives. You see, some of you are still young, so you don't understand where I'm coming from. Seriously, some of you are still young. You don't know where I'm coming from. I'm not talking of years, age. I'm talking of spirit. There is nothing disturbing as a man who prays about some particular thing every day, and it just doesn't seem to break. It is too devastating. it is too breaching to the spirit it disturbs a man it creates a certain kind of hatred of certain things that he can even get to a point and hate a lot of things not because they are really bad people but because they have prayed for something and it has failed to come sister brother you pray that means just learn the way they pray let me show you some psalms 107 28th verse let's begin from the 17th verse The Bible says, "Fools, because of their transgression, okay, because of their transgression, fools, because of their transgression, and because of their iniquities, are afflicted." Did you see that? Because of transgression and iniquity, are afflicted. Okay. Now I'm coming back to the word transgression. Galatians, chapter two, verse eighteen. I want to show you the word transgression. Many people think of transgression, but many people do not understand the word transgression. The word translated for transgression is actually the word directly meaning rebellion. Okay. So people are fools because of their rebellion. Now, the word iniquity is the continued repetition of transgression. So in a continued spirit of rebellion the bible says they are afflicted why are they afflicted because they are rebellious now look at paul's definition of transgression paul's definition of transgression is if i build again the things which i destroyed i make myself a transgressor read it again if i build again the things which i destroyed i make myself a transgressor what is the place of transgression building again the things which you destroyed many people don't know that they have destroyed certain things by reason of the actions that they took are you hearing me when you took a certain action you destroyed certain things upon your life when you build them again the bible says it is transgression But I've realized that the biggest time and place of transgression happening in a man's spirit is either a man ignoring knowledge or a man not necessarily working in knowledge even though it seems like he gives an appearance of knowledge. Are you hearing me? 
And why the Bible says that we have a weightier judgment upon our lives because we teach the gospel, it means that there are many things that seem so apparent when we speak them because we give the impression that we know them. Okay? But let me tell you something. The place of knowledge for every minister of the gospel is that you must produce the results of what you teach. You must produce the results of what you teach. If you say God heals, heal the sick. If you say God delivers, deliver the oppressed. Don't speak what God has not done. Paul says, I would rather speak of the things Christ has rather than me. Now, the place of how and why many people are growing in the gospel is because they take time to wanting to know how to manifest what they teach or preach or demonstrate. Are you hearing me? Imagine a pastor who wakes up in the morning and he's claiming money and how rich we are in God. And after speaking all that nonsense, he stands outside there and tells, you know what? John, I need 10,000. I don't have fuel back home. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Really? You were telling us that rich what? What were you saying? Rich what? How can the people who are listening to that kind of message go back home and say, wow, this guy really preaches? <laughs> you see what I'm trying to tell you? Why? Because you're not living what you are preaching. You cannot demonstrate it. You cannot demonstrate it. And that is why you'd rather speak little. Listen, don't rush into mysteries. Listen, speak little if you can demonstrate it. You'll be good. And as the advancement of demonstration comes on board, you can speak deeper. Are you hearing me? You can speak deeper. Until a point where you are perfected in a certain form of ministration. Are you hearing me? You see, many people confuse perfection in the ministration of the gospel with the gifts that flow out because they are gifted. Okay, for example, if a man is gifted in teaching mysteries, you think that because he's teaching mysteries, therefore he's in perfection. Are you hearing me? But how do you judge a man's life of perfection? You realize there are certain things that respond to him. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Perfection in God equals the things that respond to you. Things must respond to you. I mean, things must respond to you. They must respond to you. When you tell it to come, it must come. Why? Because you have gained a mastery for it to come. No master tells his dog, come and he doesn't come, except he's not its master. You see where I'm coming from? So there's a place where mastery comes in, and when mastery comes in, that means you offer lordship to everything you speak to. When you say, I speak to my finances, your finances listen. Are you hearing me? When you say, I speak to my body, your body listens. Because you have mastered over your body. When you say, I speak to my ministry to expand those walls here, the land here, the ground here, the angelics here, everything around it starts to hear because you spoke to something that you have mastery over. When you don't have mastery over things, even if you speak, you'll never get the results you want. You'll speak a million things, but you'll never get the results you want. It will frustrate you. It's hurting because you've seen a pastor, a prophet say, in the name of Jesus, this is happening and it happens. And then you also say, okay, you start to mimic. Babies mimic, okay? There's a certain age where babies start to mimic. Are you hearing me? Because it's that age. You tell the baby, I'm going. And they say, baby, you're okay, I'm going. Everything. You can come back and say, I'm tired. And she says, I'm tired. You get everything you're speaking. She's, listen, God is not calling you to mimic. He's calling you to have understanding of what you speak. Because that's what establishes you to the cause of every decision that is spoken. Are you hearing me? And that's why I say, perfection in ministry, I repeat, is when things start to respond when you call them. Transgression is when you build the very things you destroyed. You destroyed disobedience and then you build it. So consequently, when you call something, it then respond to you like it used to respond to you. That's transgression. If you ever lay a hand on a man and then they are healed in a particular order, and then you know in that realm and rank you have authority to distribute to any man in that particular need. 
and you speak in that realm and everything starts to respond to you. The day you speak and you don't respond, understand, you transgress. There was a faculty in you that built something that is against or contrary to the rank that you had. If I cast out devils out of a man and it worked last time, it must work now. If I open a blind eye, then it must open now. If the man has refused, then it's his problem. That's his problem. I'll get to another blind man and he will see. Remember one time in the overnight when I had about four people who had deaf ears? Remember that time? And then I prayed for the first lady. She failed. Now, I knew I'd not transgress. I didn't have a problem with her not hearing. I went to the next one. The next one did hear. I knew I didn't have a problem. I went to the third one. Third one had. Fourth one had. Came back to these two. You see where I'm coming from? And they received their healing. Why? Because I knew I had no place of accounting transgression. My spirit was still at peace even when they did not receive the answer. Now, when your spirit is sure that you have not transgressed, okay? When your spirit is sure now that you have not built against something you broke, listen, never worry if you don't see manifestation. You're sure it will come either way. And time will prove you right. Are you hearing me? But the frustrations come in the life of Christians who have lived a long time life of a certain affair they have called prayer. But this prayer life does not produce results. You have prayed for 20 years. You've been born again for 16 years and you're praying the same old prayer and it's not producing results and you say, oh, maybe it's where I'm going, maybe it's this, maybe it's my cousin, maybe it's this. He said it very clearly in James 4.3. You ask and receive not because you pray amiss. Learn the right way to pray. If you learn the right way to pray, you'll get the results any man who prays in that pattern prays. Just know the pattern. You pray amiss. Now, let's go back to the issue of uh, Psalms 107, the 17th verse. The Bible says, fools because of their transgression, because they built again the very things they destroyed. I'll give you an example. When you became born again, the Bible says, he has begotten us again, and to a lively hope. The hope on your life is not dead, it's alive. Say it's alive. Say it's alive. Now, the Bible says he has delivered us from this evil present world. Again, he has delivered us from this evil present world. When salvation came in your life, he delivered you from this evil present world. When you became born again, you were free that day. You might have not seen the results of freedom, but you were free that day. How be it that you enter salvation, and then after that they start to tell you that you have generational castles. What are they doing? They're building the very things you destroyed when you proclaim Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And consequently, you start to cast out devils, you rebuke things out of your life because you feel you have them. You really don't have them, but somebody built again what was destroyed before. And what was that? Transgression. When he says fools, because of their transgressions and iniquity are afflicted. That's why many people are afflicted. They did not understand the glory and joy of salvation. And because they did not understand the glory and joy of salvation, when they were born again, they had to understand who they were and what the essence of salvation was. But they did not understand the essence of salvation, why, who they are in God, or what God has done, or what salvation is. And now they were taken in two myths, the Bible says, that profit nothing. The Bible says that profit not them which are indulged in. There are certain people, they are in something, but it doesn't work, but they speak in it. And that's why I try to tell people. If you've started to move a certain course, okay, and you start to realize that in that course you're not shifting, change course. If you're praying a certain prayer life and then you realize that that prayer life is not producing results, change the prayer life. If you're hanging out with people who are not growing you, change friends. It's hard, but that's the truth. If you're fasting a certain way and that fasting is not bringing the results you need, Stop fasting that way. Fast another way. But don't waste time repeating something that doesn't work. If it worked, 
before it will work again. If it didn't work, it doesn't work. Get the way it works. Move on like that. Transgression is happening in the body of Christ today by men who build the very things they destroyed. And let me tell you some things before I go further. Salvation destroyed many things that to them many men are trying to rebuild by someone. Okay, some of you should understand this. Get me the Greek definition of salvation in all the details, okay? You're going to realize that people are not bound because they have generational curses, curses of their father, curses of their mother. No, they are bound because certain men preached Christ wrong. Ah, this is it. Soteria. Can I read? Deliverance. Preservation. Safety. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when they speak of the deliverance here, they say deliverance from the molestation of enemies. Are you hearing me? Deliverance from the molestation being taken advantage by the enemy. The moment you got born again, you were delivered from the molestation of the enemy. But how be it that a man gets born again and we tell him, no, you still have your mother's demons to deal with. You still have your cousin's demons to deal with. The demon will get you. You see what I'm trying to say? How be it that I am delivered from any molestation of my enemy and you tell me I'm bound to what I'm delivered from? Do you see transgression? Let's continue. The sum of benefits and blessings of all Christians redeemed from the earthly ills. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Redeemed from the earthly ills. Any sicknesses on the earth. He said benefits and blessings. He didn't add curses. He said benefits and blessings which Christians who are redeemed from earthly ills enjoy. Hallelujah. Now, salvation is blessings and benefits. Blessings and and that is why I told people there are certain lines I don't preach. I don't know how to say. You see, salvation also can be a trial. I can never say. Salvation sometimes it can be difficult. Don't expect that you're going to walk a straight path. Those lines are not mine. They are for certain men of God. When I'm preaching, I say one thing. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides of your anger. Great. You hear those lines? Your anger. <laughs> those are not my lines. I don't sing anger of the Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whosoever believeth in him. But have everlasting life. Those are my lines. You'll never hear me say something. I do not. I swear I don't. You see, sometimes we sugarcoat salvation and say, ah, everything is okay. Yes. To Apostle Grace, we make a matter of they are okay. For all things in Christ are? Yes. And? Yes. That's my story. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. You get what I'm saying? I don't know any other story. I don't know it. Christians, I appeal to thee by the masses of God. Stop stupid lines. Get out of those lines. That's why when a man of God is preaching those things, I switch. Delete key. You see, salvation is the poop. Why? Because you see, when Paul got to those lines, he acknowledged they could exist, but he said, Count it all joy, brethren, when thou art tempted with many diverse temptations. Meaning, even in temptation, something will come Paul's way. And then Paul is like, <laughs> you see that kind of life? For we are persuaded that all things work for good to them that love him and are called according to his purposes. It's not supposed to kill you. Laugh. 
Wake up in the morning when you slept hungry and just say, ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, ha. You feel pain in your body and you start to say, ah, ha, 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 ha. Why? It's working for your good. And listen, if you maintain the right lines, trust me, evil won't come your way. You won't be among those ones who are hit, quiet, accident, broken. You won't be in that line. Somehow they'll look at your life and realize, oh, oh. There is nothing happening to him, and really it won't. But transgression began at the salvation that was preached to men. So when we are redefining salvation, we go just deeper than telling you Jesus died and rose again. Salvation is safety. Salvation is preservation. Salvation is blessing. Salvation is increase. Salvation is deliverance from the molestations of your enemies. That's who you are. When you say, I am born again, it means you are delivered. How then do you break that line and say, I feel I have the spirit. How? You pray and receive not because you ask me. So that man goes in the presence of God with the thought that he has a demon. He has already transgressed. So when he starts to ask, God doesn't understand the language. The encoding and decoding is discrepant. In value and reporting. He doesn't understand how one are delivered from the molestation of his enemies is telling me the enemies on them. Let's continue in Psalms. One of say, uh, because of their iniquities, they are afflicted. Next verse 18. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. Their soul abhorreth. He hates all manner of revelation. And as they draw near unto the gates of death, he just hates all manner of revelation. It hates all deep things. It wants to understand simplicity by how reasonably right something is, not by the alignings of truth. Next verse. Then they cry out unto their Lord in their trouble, and then he saveth them out of their distress. How? By sending MIGs and BADGs and huh? the existing as here in bazooka watts, RPG watts. See, the Bible says, when they cry, he saves them. Are you hearing me? He saves them from their distress. He saves them from their trouble. He saves them out of their distress. And I'm thinking, they're saying, God, help me. And then he's going to get this atomic bomb and just say, Boom. Then the enemies are scattered. Like a 3D movie. And then the guy stands on the end like he's a hero. Some people think he sends rockets, missiles. <laughs> they think he sends bullets and pangas and lions. Why? Because it's Jesus to the rescue. See how he does it. Next verse. He sent. He didn't send missiles. He sent what? He didn't send bombs. He sent what? He didn't send fighter planes. He sent what? He didn't send helicopters. He sent what? He didn't send food. He sent what? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Help, but you have my word. Help. No, no, I don't want your word. Oh, your brother, what? Oh, say rocket. <laughs> say the lion, come, send it. Oh. No, 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 what? No. <laughs> I don't want your word. I want a lion. He realized the only thing to that setting is the word. Why did they cry out? They didn't help the word. Why dost thou cry? Is there no king in you? Is your counselor dead? Why are you crying? You don't have words. Any Christian, you see, oh, why isn't this happening in my life? Listen, you don't have words. When the word comes in your spirit, you won't cry anymore. All of these wailings, listen, knowledge. And you see, this funny guy doesn't know. He's whipping. He doesn't get answers. He knows he doesn't have answers, but he doesn't even attend service. He's not even consistent in service. He's not consistent in prayer. But he has, oh, I have a problem. What do you mean you have a problem? You're pushing away what ought to deliver you. But you want a certain answer. Come on. Be serious about this. You pray when you want. Okay? You read the word when you want. You listen to someone when you want. But trouble, ah! You want him to send a lion. He says, take heed of the ingrafted word which is in you. He says, for it is able to save you. 
The word engrafted is the only thing that says. Not anything outside. Not what Pastor Zach is speaking. But that thing that sat in your spirit. The engrafted word is the only word that is able to save you. Why don't you engraft it in your word? Why don't you read the word? Like crazy. Listen, whenever something happens in your life, understand what what you need. Listen, don't ask for help. No, 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 don't call for help. Listen, he, the word, is your ever-present help in time of need. He said it. He said, I am your ever-present help. You don't need help. I am present. Who is he? The word. He became flesh. We beheld his only glory as the only true son of God, full of grace and truth. That is Jesus. He's available. No, I don't want Jesus available. I want a truck to just come and shake it. And then I know it is the Lord. You see, transgression is in ignorance. Either you are not teachable or you don't want to learn. I'll give people an example. The other day, a man of God was preaching a message of Daniel and how the Bible says that Daniel refused to defile himself with the king's meat. And while the boys were eating on the table with the king in all kinds of meat and bread, and Daniel said, I shall not defile my body with the king's meat. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. But don't worry, you'll understand where I'm coming from. But you need not to defy yourself with the king's men. Am I preaching somebody? See, Daniel ate greens. I say he ate greens. Yeah, son, you understand what I'm saying? I, I say he ate greens. And sometimes you, you don't have to go eating meat every time. You sometimes have to eat greens. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, so somebody sees you driving an old car, but they don't know that you're eating greens. They, 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 they see you marry an old man, and they don't know that you're eating greens. You understand what I'm saying? They see your children in a small little school that is cheap, but they don't know that you, you're eating greens because they, their children are in big schools, very expensive schools, but they eating the king's meat, and after some time, they're going to be defiled. Am I preaching to somebody? And while the man is preaching, the Spirit of the Lord told me, that's not your message. I said, no, 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 no. Be serious, God. What do you mean? He said, that's not your message. I said, why? He says, because you're born of an incorruptible seed. <laughs> if the Bible says you're born of an incorruptible seed, which leaders and abideth forever, what business do they have teaching you how not to corrupt yourself? Now, if you know I don't walk behind, what business do you have telling me don't walk behind don't walk behind. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do you see where I'm coming from? Daniel was a corruptible seed. And so he would refuse to eat what could corrupt him because he was corruptible. And that's why in our Lord and Savior, at a particular point when he saw the food, he says, ay, 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 ay. when you go to eat, ask not. <laughs> For it is not what is out that defileth a man, but what comes out of a man. Are you hearing me? Meat does not defile a man. But the mouth of a man defileth him. Oh, shele bata la kareba la ka sele para lande lesta. And he says in the last days, men shall preach doctrines of devils, even as doctrines of Christ. Do not eat. Do not touch. Do not eat. Eat your pork, darling. Incorruptible seed can't worry of cholesterol. Cholesterol is corruption. You understand where I'm coming from? Eat your chocolate and candy in the name of Jesus. Why? You are incorruptible. I eat everything. And I am fat. Why? It cannot corrupt you. Food won't kill you. Eat in the name of Jesus. God loves me. And that's true. You've never had me. He's saying, and then thou shalt put carrots, cucumber, and cabbage, and thou shalt offer it for a burnt sacrifice. <laughs> Tell your neighbor I love meat. <laughs> now, incorruptible seed, what business do you have being taught how not to be corrupted? But it's the word of the Lord. <laughs> 
Praise the Lord. So, if I'm incorruptible, I'm beyond whether I'm eating meat or not eating meat. The Bible says, meat commendeth not. It commendeth not. In this dispensation, you're not better because you ate greens. You're not. Why? Because in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free. He says, he that eateth, eateth to the Lord. And he that does not eat, does not eat to the Lord. So let him that eateth not judge he that eateth not. And let him that eateth not, not judge him that eateth. Don't have a problem with me eating my pork. I don't have a problem with you eating your greens. Eat them. The seed is incorruptible. Am I preaching to somebody? Hallelujah. Don't judge. Do not judge. He will eat. And you see, many people, when they look at that, they think they're saying judge other people only. No. Some of you already judge yourself. That conscience to the idol. The Bible says, and because of the conscience to the idol, their conscience being weak is defiled. The weakness of conscience is when you are attached to give attention to the idol. You eat the meat like it will make you fat. On the other hand, may I eat when I don't even think it can? I don't know how it can. You get it? I'm trying to help somebody. I've ever eaten a lot of meat. Let me change. That conscience will make you fat before you want. Too much soda is not good. Shut up. I know old people who take sodas. How did they go old? But I know people who lived on water and they died away early. Transgression. Many of you, you are transgressors. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. You receive not because you ask amiss. They are buried all manner of myths. So when they scream to God, He just sends the word. Because you realize, if you're not crying with the word, you're wasting time. And that's why the Bible says, he that cometh weeping with precious seed shall come back rejoicing. Don't only come weeping, come with seed. Luke 8, 11 says the seed is the word. Don't go only with tears in your eyes. No, 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 no. Don't go with tears in your eyes. Go with tears, but with also a word. He says, he that come weeping, comma, with precious seed, comma, shall Come back rejoicing. Don't go crying without the word in your heart. Even if you cry a million things, he's not going to send bazookas. He will just send the word. That's what you should expect. Let me show you something about Paul. Hebrews 13. Let me show you a mystery. Verse 5. Let me show you why you fail to get answers. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Now let me show you something. He sent his word and said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Let me show how many Christians pray. Many Christians say, God, you said you will never leave me as though you're proving him wrong or you're questioning his definition of living. You said you never leave me. No forsake me. You said it, God. Why am I forsaken? <laughs> God. You said you'll never. You said that none shall lack her mate. How come my mate has lacked me? You understand? You said you shall supply all my needs. According to his riches in glory, why am I poor? Ah, no. Listen to because you said what you ought to say. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you. So what do the Christians say? Verse 6. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do to me. So Paul remembered that God will never leave him nor forsake him. See what took him to prayer. When a man said, we're going to destroy you, Paul said, you're my helper. You will never leave me. Are you seeing what I'm trying to say here? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That we may say, you're my helper. You're my helper. You're my helper. 
I shall not fear. Why am I saying he's my helper? I shall not fear. Because the word says, he will never leave in a possession. That is the right way to pray. You remember when he said that, I was once young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Isaiah said, say to the righteous, it is well with me. Because when the righteous sees food and it's not there, he says it is well. That's praying. According to God, that is praying. No, you, the way you pray to God, I don't have food. <laughs> Give me food. I don't sleep hungry. Me. You see, you see what I'm trying to tell you? You see how you're praying the wrong way. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. If you know you don't have a job and you've tried to put CVs everywhere and they are no longer anywhere, understand this one thing. He said promotions come from neither east nor west. That you may say, I am promoted in the name of Jesus. I am promoted in the name of Jesus. I am rich in the name of Jesus. I shall not want. I shall not lack in the name of Jesus. He's the lift of my head. He's the strength of my father. He's my help of the ages past. He's my hope of the years to come. In the name of Jesus, I cannot lack. That's prayer. If she gets at you and then he checks you and you feel you're so old to get another one. The moment he checks you, turn back and say, dun, 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 dun. He just made a way for the right one. Dun, 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 dun. But they will, oh God, I'm still I'm going to die. They are giving out papers. Rogers, research, then they give you a paper. You see 36. The first prayer you make, I am dead. Look at it and say, this is men's rating. I'm already rated. I was rated before 36 came on my paper. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Sete le barabala. Bless am I going in. Bless am I going out. Says I observe lying vanities for set their own mercy. I refuse to observe 36. I observe the head and not the tail. I have a hundred in the name of Jesus. A hundred on the earth. A hundred in the heavens. Ra -ba 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 -ba. Move on. Then you find out. God. God. I have a retake. What am I going to tell daddy? Listen, you have the father of your daddy, Jehovah God. He doesn't see a retake. Because he raised no fools. He said he has been made. My wisdom, my redemption, my sanctification. I promise you will never see that a six a day. Tell your neighbor, he said that we may say. Say it again. Say, he said that we may say. Period. Let them say. I feel a headache. Let the say. I am broke. Let the blind say. My eyes have stopped seeing where this world the Lord has done in me. That's the right prayer. That's the right prayer. So when you get troubled, ask yourself one question. What did he say? The moment you pick what he said, nothing else matters. No human opinion, no cousin, uncles, love, smaller brothers, smaller mothers, advice, all of that. Listen, the word of God is clear. When you cry, He sends His word and heals. So as you speak this word, healing starts to come your way. Before you know it, things start to work in your life. You don't know how or why they're working, but you're praying the right way. You're praying the right way. You're speaking the right words. Are you hearing me? Then people start to ask, but how come some guys are on the mountain crying? But for me, I just wake up and say, shut up. And it's working. Because I have understood the principle the word say. That I was hearing people singing. 
Echa magero change chiri wano Echa magero chiri wano Oh chiri Erane The Spirit of God told me no Echa magero change chiri wano God doesn't send blessings on cement Echa magero change chiri wano Chiri wano Erane ganacho you have this treasure in heaven vessels that the glory might be of the Lord. Did I want to send an anointing on that flower? No. The anointing abides in you. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at Kampala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.